Let me take two answers that Jesus gave to two simple questions and then build my case for you. The first is a conversation of a man who came to Jesus and said to him, is it all right to pay taxes to Caesar? Jesus looked at him and said, do you have a coin? The man said, yes. He said, give me that coin. Jesus looked at the coin and said, whose image do you see on this? The man said, Caesar. Jesus says, give to Caesar that which is Caesar's and give to God that which is God's. The man ought to have had a follow-up question and he ought to have said, what belongs to God? Jesus' answer would have been, whose image is on you? I want you to understand something here. No other founder of a worldview would have positioned you in that description. The Imago Dei, the image of God. What this questioner was trying to do was spit him in a political battle with the powers that be. Jesus always resisted the lure of political power. He never enforced his belief on anyone and he resisted that temptation to power when they wanted to make him ruler. He said no. But then the second questioner comes and wants to pit him law against law, ethic against ethic. Because Moses had given 613 laws. And so this man comes to Jesus and they couldn't beat him up against political authority. They tried to pitch him against religious authority. And they said to him, which is the greatest commandment? Out of 613, it is fascinating to me that Jesus did not select one. What he said was this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. He said on these two laws hang all of the laws and the prophets. Why did he not give one? Because hinged on the one was the inextricable imperative of the second. You cannot say you love God and hate your neighbor. And the imperative to love God is because when you take all of the commandments and take the 10 of them which were key, if there's one word that the 10 commandments can be reduced to, it's the word sacred. Your life is sacred. Your property is sacred. Your marriage is sacred. Your time is sacred. And so is your neighbor's. You cannot violate your neighbor's sacredness of right and tell that neighbor that you still love God. I think what Jesus says here is remarkable. The value given to you is intrinsic. It's not extrinsic. That every human life is a life of worth and a life of value. That is the bequest of the Judeo-Christian teaching, that your life has intrinsic worth and is inviolable. Jesus always reached out to the marginalized over the of society rather than the sophisticated ones, be they religious or powerful. When he stopped to talk to the woman at the well who had five broken marriages in her life, the disciples question why he would even want to be seen by a woman like that. And the woman with the alabaster ointment came and poured it over him. She was a woman who'd made her money through means that would never have been affirmed or supported by the mainstream of society there. And the Pharisee looked at her and he said, thought to himself, if he only knew who she was, he would never have allowed her to even come near him. Children came to talk to him. The poor and the leprous came for his touch. The imperative of love and compassion from Christ to the marginalized in society came as a natural outworking of these two precepts that every human being is made in the image of God and you shall love your neighbor as yourself.